congratulations on the win, Coach. Um, I don't know who you handed out game balls to, but defensively, uh, Tuioti uh, seemed like he was everywhere. Um, what did you say to the guys afterwards, and what about his performance and just the strip stack and everything you saw to him today? You know, I really kept it from the individual accolades, and I talked about the team win, and I talked about the guys coming out, doing what they're capable of doing, and being able to finish the game like that. You know, I think these guys need a little bit of, um, uh, what do we call it, uh, push in the head to, to let them know that this is how a game should end when you got control of them. And today to go out and be able to do those things, I thought it was really good for us. I thought it was good for our team. I thought it was good for our organization and definitely good for our city. We haven't heard his name called that often, but Jacob did have a great game, Coach. Uh, were you impressed with what you saw on the sidelines from him? You know, Jacob was all over the place. You know, he caused a couple fumbles, got a couple fumbles. Man, it felt like he was everywhere. He plays special teams. He makes tackles for us. You know, I can't say enough good things about what Jacob is able to do for us just because of where he's come from and the man. You know, he was mic'd up today. He was wired up. Might mic him up every week now if he plays like that. But he was uh, certainly fired up and certainly played well for his team, and we're fired up for him. Another man who took advantage of his opportunities was Ido Smith. Uh, that spark he provided late in the game and the ability for him to call, close out and, and come through when needed. You know, we're really talking about focusing on running the ball versus two high defenses. And Ido got in there at the second half and really sparked us. Broke off a couple big runs, gave us a couple explosives. You know, you need those things when that happens. That opens up your pass game. It definitely helps even things out to make you less one-dimensional, to give us an opportunity to, to dictate the terms of the game, which we were able to do this, day, this week. I know you'll tell me you think you, that everybody can play better, but the defense, Coach, I mean, five turnovers, five sacks, uh, holding them out of the end zone. What can you say about uh, the job they did today? You know, stats are for losers, but, <laughs> you know, when you get those things, they work in your favor, you go out there, um, you get those guys to believe in themselves and believe in what they can do. Um, those things always work out in the right favor and those always work out in the right way for you. So today is that's what happened for us. One stat that stood out that we talked about this week was the rushers, uh, Raiders rushing game, seventh in the NFL. What did you do to negate them today? You know, I guys did a really good job. We got some big bodies in there. They're able to use their hands and shed blocks and come off and make tackles. That running back's a very good – Jacobs, he's very tough to tackle. Uh, we were able to get there in, in bunches and bunch of people in the, in the spot to make sure we can ensure that we get him on the ground. Um, he's going to run through arm tackles. We were not able to do that. We were putting our chest on him. It was a physical fought game. Another ASC win. It was awesome. What was the key, Coach, to creating those five turnovers? Was it the pressure? Um, just a lot of guys doing their jobs individually? I just thought it was the guys' uh, ball mindset. You know, they really had a ball mindset today to go after it. They really had a ball mindset every time they had an opportunity to get it. Um, they got the ball out, you know, the hustle, the turn and run. All of those things just just, just, just kicked into play. And usually when that happens and technique and opportunity meet, you get the ball. Anything you can share, Coach, on uh, James Carpenter? Uh, Carpenter, rather, a bunch of guys that were banged up today. Uh, Ridley, Zacchaeus, Young Haku, and uh, obviously, uh, again, Carpenter. You know, we got a bunch of guys in the team as Warriors, man. They've caught play through an injury, and we'll have to see where he is and see how bad it is and where he can go from here. Um, and obviously, Rick was able to bounce in and out of the game, so we'll see where he goes when we get a little bit more uh, feedback from our trainers tomorrow and the next day. We talked uh, this week about uh, the way Darren Waller had been just a, a problem, right, an issue you guys had to deal with. Um, how were you able to neutralize him today? You know, Foyer, any of the man-to-man -man opportunities, was able to cover a man-to-man. -man. He stepped up in a big way. We were able to confuse the coverage a little bit and put a little bit on car to make him have to sort his way through some of those things. He's a really good football player, and you can't just take him out with one guy. You just can't take him out with one thing. So you got to be able to mix it up and be able to take away that offense. They're a really good offense. Tape don't lie, Coach. And I know you were eager to show the guys the New Orleans video coming into this week. Um, easier to get your message coming off a performance like that? And then how do you get the guy to buy, buy in knowing the tape this week will be better than last? You know, I don't, ever want to, I don't ever want to say it's easier to give a message. You know, sometimes those tough battles are fought through difficulty. And that game last week was some difficulty for us. And it was able to show them and just give them the truth. And when you're able to give guys the truth of what happened in your version of the truth and let those guys – you know, sit on it and take it and come out to play. I think that's what those guys did this week. I think we took it into this game, and I think it really helped us this week. Julio, obviously a no-go for you today, but five receivers, Coach, caught passes uh, in the absence of Julio Jones. What can you say about the receiving core and the ability for them to take advantage of their opportunities? You know, whenever you're missing Julio, the greatest player as he is, you got to have people step up, and we got guys that are very capable of doing it. You know, we've seen Blake today step up. We've seen Powell step up. We've seen Gage step up. We've seen Ridley step up. OZ was getting off rolling until he got injured. But, you know, those guys have just been stepping up all year whenever they've been called upon. And it's been really nice to see. Back to Ito, where you called upon his number again, gave you the ceiling, uh, you know, first downs and scores. Has he put himself, Coach, in more and more of a conversation to earn more and more playing time? You know, anytime you play that way, you have to say yes. You know, Ito went out there today and played really well for us. Um, it's not his first time playing well for us. He's played well for us in the past. And we shouldn't be shocked. You know, Ito has the ability to do that. That's what he does. And uh, we should be looking forward for more of that from Ito. 
what did it mean to you, Coach? Uh, I know you don't talk about yourself often at all, rather, but to, to meet your beat your mentor in Gruden, and what did your coach say to you after the game? You know, I think any any chance to go one and zero mentality against anybody is always special. But when you go up against a guy that just you know that's humbled and, and congratulate you at the half at the half at the half field mark and tell you congratulations and 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 you did a good job today. That means a lot when it comes from the guy that you most respect in this business.